Hey folks, Ru here. Just wanted to let you know that this episode of Ruel's Running Podcast is sponsored by Health IQ, an insurance company that helps health conscious people get a special life insurance rates. I don't know why I said special, <laughs> but Health IQ can save customers up to 33% because physically active people have a 56% lower risk of heart disease, 20% lower risk of cancer, and 58 lower 58% lower risk of diabetes compared to people who are inactive. So, what does that mean? It means later on in the show, I'll tell you a bit more, but uh, just feel rest assured that Health IQ uses science and data to secure lower rates on life insurance for health conscious people like yourself. You know, you, the runner, the cyclist, the strength trainer, you know, the acrobat, the gymnast, somebody who's just active and, you know, um, takes care of themselves, you know, they want to take that data into consideration so that you can maximize your um, life insurance buying capabilities. That's the way I'm going to put it, and I'm sticking to it. And remember, to see if you qualify, get your free quote today at healthiq.com slash R-U-E-L. That's healthiq.com slash Ruel. Or mention the promo code R-U-E-L. That's Ruel. When you talk to a Health IQ agent on with the show. Podcasting from somewhere in the San Francisco Bay Area, the birthplace of Bruce Lee, the iPhone, and the bendy straw. This is Ruel's Running Podcast, a podcast about running, health, family, play, and an NSNG lifestyle. And now, here's your host, Ruel. No was a dream, a million miles away. Amazon.com. You know, I won't be surprised if more and more stuff that I shop for, buy, and get shipped to my home comes from Amazon. It's just a reality, right? And if this is your reality, go to RuelsRunning.com. Click through to the Amazon banner to get to Amazon. Why am I asking you to do so? Well, it is a no-cost-to-you way, if you like listening to Ruel's Running Podcast, it is a way that you can help the show out without spending more than you've already spent while shopping at the good folks at Amazon.com. So help us out. Go to RuelsRunning.com, click through to the Amazon.com site, and shop, connect, and enjoy. One, two, here we go. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Ruel's Running Podcast. I'm your host, Ruel Abadam. What's up? What's cooking? How's it going? I'm uh, I'm back. Took a short trip this past weekend, and that was followed by a, uh, a wonderful um, trail event that I participated in and uh, survived. And I can get into that later. But first, if you are a new listener, welcome to the podcast. Hope you stick around and enjoy the show. If you are a return listener, welcome back. What's up? Ha! Huh. It is cold now, and um, but it's if you're not sitting in the in in the vehicle like I am, sheltered by uh, the shell of a car. Um, it's actually pretty cold, it, but it looks nice from where I'm sitting. Sun is out. Could be a nice day to run, but I don't think I will be running today. I still sort of need to, to give myself time to um, just take it easy and, uh, you know, let some of the, the niggles subside. That way uh, I can rest, recover, be uh, healthy for the next thing that I choose to do or sign up for. Awesome. Awesome. Possum. What are we doing? What are we doing, guys? Huh. Let's see. Let's start off the show with... You know how previous episodes I was talking about I was looking for music and I've been looking for music and I've been asking the audience for ideas on where I can get music preferably music that um, I can have uh, free use of 
on the podcast and you know help make the podcast a little bit more interesting and entertaining and uh, how I'd say hey guys if you know of anything uh, hit me up at 650-M-U-G-R-U-E-L that's 650-M-U-G-R-U-E-L um, leave me a message or hit me up on the website if you don't want to dial a number go to ruelsrunning.com there's a uh, there's a widget on the right hand side you just click on it and it'll take you to SpeakPipe and you can leave a message online for me yeah you can do that um, but I'm uh I'm at a point now where I'm just dabbling a little bit with some tools and trying to create some audio of my own, some music clips that I could use. And uh, the hope is over time I can get proficient and a little better at it. Um, I am not <laughs> good at all, but these tools make it doable so you know, we're talking about tools like GarageBand and the Launchpad app and um, you know some of the recording equipment I have I could just um, you know do my best to utilize these things and uh, come up with something we shall see it also takes time and time isn't something that I have a whole lot of but when I am moved to compelled to motivated to um, I'll come up with something. Awesome. Remember, friends, let your friends know, too, that you can find this podcast, this silly little show, on other outlets like the Spotify app, iHeartRadio, yada, 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 Google Play Music. Yeah. Awesome. So what's cooking, y'all? What is cooking? I um, Lately, I've been cooking omelets that's that is the thing and it, they're and they aren't omelets for me because again i'm still that kind of guy that guy who just want to wants to enjoy my coffee and not hungry not interested in you know chewing anything just want to enjoy a nice fresh brewed cup of coffee or pressed cup of coffee with a little bit of heavy cream but I've been doing omelets almost every morning now for my wife. And they're basic omelets. It first started off with just your basic, you know, plain omelet or scrambled eggs. Now I'm doing the simple diced, diced tomatoes and mushroom omelet for her every morning. With a splash of olive oil, still with a little bit of bacon grease in there, you know, seasoned salt and pepper. And uh, I'm finding that the more and more I that I'm doing it, I'm getting better at it, and which is a good thing. I will be the omelet master, and I will create the the omelet podcast for everyone to enjoy. Um, what else is cooking? The um, the standard bone broth has been made and churning in the instant pot. That's uh, lately it's been primarily beef bone broth uh, not the mix of the chicken and the bone but I found that for the beef bone broth if I I think if I add a little bit more tarragon and a little bit more rosemary I think not so much of the rosemary it kind of tastes a little like wait a minute is this chicken soup or is this chicken broth I thought it was just beef but yeah so there's so if, if, if I get the the herbs right and the seasoning right it um it can taste different <laughs> in a good way but uh and lastly what i've been doing talking about bone broth is i've been taking broccoli crowns the florets and the stock i've been steaming them in a pot a shallow uh a, a, a pot with a small bit bit of water so that i could steam crowns in the pot and then I've been setting that aside so whenever I feel like I want something like I did last night, I would take the Vitamix, I would put a whole broccoli crown, a whole steamed broccoli crown in the Vitamix, and I would take some hot bone broth. I would take a bowl's worth of hot bone broth and I would put it in the Vitamix. I would put a, a nice hefty splash of heavy cream and a good splash of olive oil, seasoned salt and pepper, a lot of salt, a lot of pepper, 
and I would whiz that thing up in the Vitamix. It would come out nice and creamy, and I'd just have myself, uh, you know, a nice big bowl of broccoli soup. So that's what's been cooking. Let me know what you've been cooking. Um, I could use some good ideas. Awesome. Now, um, I mentioned um, the, the past week the family took, uh, well, I might have mentioned it, but, you know, we we decided to take a quick trip, uh, a one-nighter, overnighter, a one-night overnighter, if you will, um, at uh, Camarillo. And uh, the, the trip was just sort of wanted to get away do something and even though it was a one-nighter it, it it was a nice time out with the family we got to we, the reason why we were there was we wanted to be as close as possible so that we can uh, take a make a visit to some some friends who are practically family and uh, spend some time with them so they were Essentially, the the high the highlight or the the main purpose of the trip, you know, go down and get situated, then then do the visit, spend as much time as we can, and then uh, you know go back to the hotel and you know and check out the next day. We did that, so um, you know, and uh, when we planned it, we thought like, man, it's just not a whole lot of time, but we're also at a point now where we feel. The trip is, the trip starts when you head out the door and you get on the road. It's not just uh, when you get to that destination, and that's that's kind of true. It's actually similar to this ultra running stuff. Even if it's not ultra running, even if it's marathon training or half marathon training, depending on where you are, any sort of training, it's the preparation leading up to the event, or it's the the journey leading up to that final destination um, you know there's a lot to be discovered appreciated and enjoy on your way to that thing whether it be a place or whether it be an event what you do at that place or how you perform during an event you know is its own thing but it's often shorter than what it took for you to get there and sometimes there's a journey back you know there's the road trip back back home or there's the journey of recovery and the processing of the experience and taking those lessons learned to um, improving your body improving your mind so that you can do it all over again and um, so yeah, the family did that. It was a great, great time out, you know. And we we look forward to doing more and more of those things. We didn't do anything. We we didn't go to Disneyland or Legoland or any other sort of land or park. It was just it was nice. It was just check in, spend time with the family, spend time with the friends, you know, catch a few meals, hang out, you know, and do the road trips. And on the trip back, you know. We uh, we were we were in uh, up in between some I don't know if they're mountains or what, but folks who are from the, from California, uh, Los Angeles area, and who make off trips uh, t- to the north know about the grapevine on uh, Interstate Five, and and uh, we were driving through it. And these flakes were were popping up on on my view on through the, on the drive, you know, um, whipping past the windshield. I'm thinking, what is that? Is that ash? Because you know, looking up above, there was a lot of gray and gloom and and haze. And I was thinking, was there a fire? Was this a res- are these like? remnants of some far some fire off in the distance that had been put out or is going on and uh more and more of it showed up but you know i was watching the temperature and i was touching the the inside of the the window and and it was getting pretty cold at least for for this time of the year and here in 
California. And then I realized, wait a minute, that's snow, you know, and I'm, you know, for folks who know who I, know my background, I'm, I'm, not, I'm an island kid. You know, I grew up on an island and I'm not, I don't spend a whole lot of time doing anything wintry sports, snow type sports. So this was new to me, you know, watching snow kind of come, come at me or driving through it. And it was an, it was a fun surprise, but it was concerning because uh, I knew that I'm ready for a new set of tires and I didn't want to be caught up in a situation where I was losing traction and I got a whole family to, to think about plus this big piece of moving machinery that I'm uh, that we're all sitting in. <laughs> I'm a wimp. And then eventually after a while the the fluffiness turned to wet you know, and then eventually the wet turned to hail, and then that got a little bit more concerning. But then, as we got out of out of the whole pass and down below, uh, things uh, cleared up. But you know, the air was still pretty cold. And uh, but yeah, that's what happened on the trip back. It was neat. It was neat. It was it was it, it was neat for me. I know folks who are listening who are sitting in like a, a crap ton of rain and a crap ton of snow um, aren't uh, entertained at all, and I apologize. Mm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm going to look forward to doing many more of those short trips and, and just spend more time together. Sweet. Health IQ, rated 9.6 out of 10 on Trustpilot. Uh, customers love them. <clears throat> you know, you know Ryan Hall, the fastest marathoner in American history and the only United States athlete to break the one-hour uh, time for the half marathon? This is what he has to say about Health IQ. Quote, It's perfect because it's made for people like me with a healthy, active lifestyle. Unquote. The lower heart rates that many pro athletes have can sometimes negatively affect insurance rates. Hall liked the fact that Health IQ used this active lifestyle as an asset in getting a good life insurance rate rather than it being a detriment. He, he commented that he appreciated how Health IQ made the process easy and simple for him, given how limited his time already was. Health IQ is the fastest growing life insurance company with over $5 billion in coverage. So, like saving money on your car insurance for being a good driver, Health IQ saves you money on your life insurance for living a health-conscious lifestyle. To see if you qualify, get your free quote today at healthiq.com slash ruel. Or mention the promo code R-U-E-L when you talk to a Health IQ agent today. I mentioned, and I want to actually do a separate episode on sort of this race that I did recently and do a whole episode specifically on the event and the race. But just to touch on it briefly here, um, last Saturday was the Chabot Red Tail Ridge run. Um, I entered the 50K. It's a trail run. It's got about 4,000 feet of elevation gain. And, um, you know, it starts off where you run on a paved section along the side of a lake, Lake Chabot in Castro Valley, California. Then after about a mile, you head up into the hills on the trail. Um, you, go, do a, you do a, a short climb. And then a short descent into um, what I think is called Mission Hills, Va- Mission Valley or something or other. And there's a golf course there. So you basically find your way back down and to, into a, a flat section. You cut across um, onto, the next, onto the next climb. So you, this starts a big climb. And the adventure continues. <laughs> Um, I did the event last year. I did a, a, some sort of episodic uh, race report on that last year where I ended up finishing the thing last. And the conditions last year were pretty wet and muddy and it made me wonder that for this year, you know, how I'd do uh, if the conditions weren't muddy and wet. So 
briefly the event was uh was not wet it was not muddy and um was pretty excited went off to the event and early on um struggled with um some sort of injury and uh you know and uh just did what i had to do to get through it and i had quit many times many times in my mind and uh but told myself enough um good things or the right things and just had short exchanges with folks on the course and at aid stations just enough to buy me time to not keep telling myself to quit um so there's more times i told myself to quit than there were times i told myself to not to quit um but in the end i didn't quit i i uh i tricked myself to um how you say i tricked myself uh by allowing uh, by putting myself in a situation where i had no other choice if that even makes sense and i'll describe that in the next uh episode where i cover it more in detail and um so all in all i uh i completed the uh, the distance i i completed the uh, what i was set out to do and i love it because you know this is the first event for 2018 and to be able to cover the distance uh means a whole lot considering i had three attempts at it last year completed it i completed it i completed the first of the three last year and then the remaining two they went wrong in their own ways and i never got to complete the uh, the course so you know this is this is good this is good for 2018 and good for me and um so i completed it and uh some of you who follow me on social media know the outcome and uh again i'm just I'll just talk about it yeah it was good i i i i i loved it um thoroughly and i don't know that i'll go back only because i need to the event seems to happen on a on a 3 day weekend and we're starting to make our plans for next year around the same time which means i I just a good chance that I won't be able to to do it next year but you know and I'm kind of sad about it but it just means you know there are other things that I'm going to have to look forward to and and experience um it was a great it was a great run you know it was a great uh learning experience and there's a uh, when it comes to putting myself out there in a really uncomfortable situation and doing what i need to do to get out um this past run was a reminder that i have that ability and you know it's not about you know it it reminds me that that it's not about just going out there and trying to get a better performance than before or trying to get the best performances i can or it's not even about um can i do it fat adapted or can I do it with the least amount of sugar anymore it's not anything like that um and for a long time I struggled with is is it can I do it without the bonk you know I've I've been so I've been so over the concerned about the bonk that I've uh you know I never really put myself out on the line but you know I I've got a lot to learn and I'm learning stuff and there's some there were some good learnings out of this um so yeah anyways that's that I'll talk about it on the next episode where I where I'll just focus on the race um so let's see health wise out of it what I've learned is I uh you know giving myself a, bit, a little bit of time to recover but what, what I've learned because after the event you know I spent some time with a guy who was I uh, I guess you'd say a chiropractor or a masseuse or some 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 sort. But he was good he was good with his hands and he was very knowledgeable and we have alignment uh in in terms of how we perceive things like standard medical care and and things like pharmaceuticals and obviously him being a chiropractic 
type guy, a chiropractor or massage type guy. He's he's in the realm of other other methods of care out, you know, sep- separate from, you know, the standard uh, med- medicine. Um, but you know, as far as nutrition and diet and, st- and stuff, we you know we we basically see eye to eye. So it was nice to to actually hear somebody talk to me about it and all I can do is nod in agreement um, it's nice to have somebody else talk to me about it than me spewing and preaching um, anyway so, so I, I spent some time with him um, got him to crack my back and and check my uh, my my injuries and and uh, and uh, what I learned was I've neglected for years my flexibility and um, and it was because of wrong thinking about how I didn't need to be as flexible as I previously was when I was into a lot of the martial arts um, a lot you know when I when I stopped being active in the martial arts you know started being a parent and then started into running you know I got some information about how there wasn't a need as a runner to have as much flexibility because you know a level of tension in the your mechanics is beneficial in that sort of sp- in that springiness and that ability for your body to have that that return of energy in that springiness which is a result of not being super flexible so now I'm changing my thinking that and especially after th- have talking to him was that uh, I uh, I can stand to reduce my injury by regaining back my flexibility and I think enough has enough time has passed where I haven't um, kept up my flexibility that you know, I need to before it gets too late and put myself at risk of having um, recurring injuries or more injuries. And the older I get, um, you know, being flexible can only be a good thing. So I'm back at it. I'm as I recover, as I'm recovering. You know, I'm I'm doing the foam rolling, which I've also neglected. I'm, um, you know, I had a lot of advice from folks during the event you know specific to my injury that I need to be foam load foam rolling and I know that it's just I've uh, I've just not focused on it but uh, you know putting myself out there on on a more than eight hour um, trail run you know there's a lot of time to myself to to, to convince myself that yeah you know if I'm going to be committing myself putting myself out like this um, I need to take that sort of those preparations and that level of care that type of care uh, seriously otherwise I'm putting myself out like this and uh, not going to uh, give myself the best chance so I'm foam rolling and I'm also um, returning to uh, a stretching routine that uh gets me back to a level of flexibility that I am capable of and have been capable of. And that's like serious flexibility, sort of like the high kick flexibility, the 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 Jean-Claude Van Damme type flexibility. That's the type of flexibility I'm talking about. I know you're thinking like, wait a minute, you're a runner. You don't need to like do a full-on spread eagle. <laughs> I was like, I know, but it's cool. Um, and so I'm, I'd be curious to know. I mean, once I get there, what that would mean for my running. So it's another test. It's another experiment, and it's another thing to do. But I'll do it. I'll do it for the sake of uh, just uh, improving myself and keeping myself, uh, you know, as best able to perform as possible. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Um, you know, if you yourself have similar experiences with flexibility and how it's impacted your ability to to function not just run uh i'd like to know let me know awesome so that's uh that's about it 
updates on the NSNG community, not a whole lot of updates. The Vinnie Tordwich, No Sugar, No Grains Facebook group, you know, um, Rebecca Paulson's been added to the, the, the team of admins to help make sure that, that, that a community has, uh, has someone to care for it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's awesome. And, uh, I talked about driving through, uh, snow and, and, uh, hail, uh, around the same time. I got a, got a buzz from Lonnie, Lonnie Beecham about getting a call to do a podcast with Vinny and Anna. Then I got messaged by Anna about getting ready to Skype me into the call. I'm thinking, okay, wasn't ready for this. But, uh, so the, uh, uh, Vinny and Anna and, uh, the podcast, the uh, Fitness Confidential podcast, as it's known today, basically Vinny's podcast, Vinny Torturich, um, you know, they they recorded a, uh, the thousand and one first episode, and to sort of commemorate, you know, how far the podcast has come along, they contacted, uh, you know, old friends, old guests, former former guests, former, um, you know long-standing uh followers and participants in the community you know and uh you know patched them through guested them briefly into into the episode so you know Lonnie Lonnie was in um um Andrea Anders um Kendra Barthel uh Greg Vick and uh and I'm gonna be as I name people out I'm gonna be missing uh, obviously, Vinny, 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 the host, Anna Vucino, the the hostess, um, Andy Schreiber, uh, co-host on uh, the the other episodes, and uh, you know, little old me, you know, driving through snow, went through the the crappy Skypey connection, and uh, you know, answered a few questions, uh, had a. Had a good time as much as I could, uh, given the circumstances. And so if you guys want to check out that episode and haven't already, it's uh, the Fitness Confidential podcast. It's episode 1001. It's incredible how far it has come. Um, And uh, look forward to 1001 more. So that's that. Let's see. AbadamStudios.com. They're practically... uh, um, like the default um, sponsor of this podcast because it's me <laughs> it's me sponsoring me how good is that but um, yes abadamstudios.com check it out for uh, things along uh, that for things like um, you know web stuff and social media stuff and design stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff and stuff um Regarding stuff, I'm working on, um, I have another podcast on the works, haven't talked details about it, and I actually have a third one as well, it's really early, but as I plow through this second, as I plow through the, the beginnings and the setup of this second podcast, the third one uh, which won't which won't be um, my podcast, but it'll it'll be for for uh, we'll we'll just say for a client or for a friend. It'll be that way. Um, so you know, a lot more podcasting uh, in going to be happening. Uh, if if it's not here at Ruwal's running, it's going to be at these other two, that which I'll talk about. Uh, hopefully, get to talk about sooner than later. Awesome. Um, Shoutouts to the good folks at uh, Inside Trail Racing for uh, putting on a good event. I really, really enjoy participating in in last weekend's race. Uh, shout out to Chris Cleary, who uh, was one of the photographers uh, who I got to meet along the trail. Who, who, who he's one of the guys that got to see me <laughs> suffer through and uh, make suggestions on how I can. Uh, um, make things better uh, so that I don't have to have this sort of injury uh, recurring. Uh, 
Um, yeah. Um, shout outs to, um, uh, again, the volunteers at the aid stations, you know, they, you know, they gave me just enough conversation to, to make me feel good about myself so that I can keep going on. And, uh, yeah. And shout outs to my family for allowing me the time to spend on a Saturday to do this selfish event, this, uh, thing called running. Awesome. That's it. Lastly, folks, if you think someone can benefit from stand to benefit or harmed from this little show, you know, there are more podcast episodes out there. Again, you can check out Apple Podcasts, formerly known as iTunes, um, you know, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, all that good stuff. Wherever you can find podcasts somewhere, you'll find you'll find this stuff. Awesome. Thanks, guys. That's a wrap. Remember, folks, hug your friends, hug your family, eat something delicious, and go run something. Bye. Thanks for listening to Ruel's Running Podcast with Ruel. If you like what you just heard, share it with your friends and your enemies. Also, be sure to check out the site over at ruelsrunning.com. This has been another Coffee with Heavy Cream production. Join us next time for another silly show of Ruel's Running Podcast.